little beast I'm trying to figure out how I'm Hello there, my name is Stuart Ford from Stuart Ford Fitness and Martial Arts Instruction. Today's date is Friday the 12th of June 2020 and this is the fourth and final week of my live streamed intro series Coach in a Box which is designed to showcase the various um, services which I provide including fitness, martial arts uh, and injury therapy. And you have tuned in to Fitness in a Box um, basically the fitness in a box session is about calisthenics or body weight training and all sort of things that you can do with little to no equipment. We've been doing it all with no equipment basically apart from maybe a mat if you have a hard surface. And um, what we're going to be doing today specifically, today specifically we are going to be working on balance and stability. Okay, so uh, that's using your core a lot as, you, as, as we always do really in, a, in this kind of calisthenics and functional style of exercise but we're, we're going to be focusing a lot with balance and stability, which are also involved in the hips, and just seeing how we can do that through our different planes of motion that we, we often, often work through. Okay, so I am going to get some music started, and uh, we'll see if somebody joins in. We, we may have a guest tonight, but uh, she's not here just yet, but I'm going to get some music started and we'll get going. So, whoop, whoop. the music is now starting for you, and we are going to crack on. So we're going to start with our warm-up, so we're going to do feet hip width apart, we're going to stick out our chest and pull down our chin. So we're arching our back and then we're going to change to the hips tucked under and the back all rounded and the chin up. We'll do this from the side for you so you can see from the side. So we go chest out, chin down, and bum back. And then we're going to tuck the bottom under and lift the chin up. So we're stretching the neck, we're stretching the spine, and we're also using the hips. And then if you want to see how some of these exercises are done in better technique then you can tune into my rehab in a box um, pre-recorded videos which were live streamed also and it'll take a bit more effort a bit more skill and you can get a better technique in okay, case so we're opening and closing getting those joints working the fluid pumping into the joints and then our next step we're going to do is side to side our lateral hog side to side, so I'm straightening one knee, bending the other, and then I go to the side that's straightened, and then I can have a little slide down with my hand as well, and the neck can go back the opposite direction. But a few things to get right, a great little exercises if you can get to understand them. And all the while through these exercises, things that don't need to work a bit in isolate. If I don't want to go in a particular range of motion, like forwards and back in this case, or rotational, I'm making sure my core is nice and strong, my tummy, my hips, my feet are facing forwards, so I can't move out of this, this, uh, this screen movement. Okay, and then let's rotate, so hands together, and then we're going to rotate. Shoulders one way, hips the other way. And my head's going to go the same way my hips go. But I'm changing, head and hips the same, shoulders the opposite. The shoulders are pointing the way my fingers are going. And rotate, and rotate, and rotate. So I always start off with a good warm up. And again, we're just doing these until your body starts to feel loosened and you're getting more range of motion. And again, here I'm not swaying out of my my central pivot point to rotate around and keeping the hips center of the, gro the groin in between the feet. Okay, then moving from there we're going to go on to the arms. We're going to place the arms out to the sides and then we're going to stretch our palms down so we're popping our wrists and then we're going to turn back and clench the fists. And turn over, the chest can come out again like the first exercise, then turn under and the chin up. Chest out and chin down. Chest in and chin up. Turn over, turn back. Turn over, turn back. Yep. Although the chest is turning as well, the arms are still trying to get more range of motion than how far the chest and the spine flexes and extends. Breathe nicely through it as well. Breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, 
Breathing out, in and out. And you feel those shoulders warming up already. Now we're changing to alternate. So one palm down, the other fist clench and turn the opposite way. And I'm looking back towards the fist side. And then change, 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 change. Good. Twisting with that. In the body moving. I'm just letting the chest turn into the direction the palm's going as well. I'm just trying to get more range of motion, more range of motion. Okay, good. So those shoulders have feel like they're warming up well now nicely. And it's come down to the waist a little bit more. So we're just gonna have the hips and waist. I'm just gonna rotate the hips around. Circle motion. And you're listening to see if anything's tight. I've got my nice tight hamstrings going on from a few training sessions and doing the lightning strike session. Changing direction. Anything of course for you that you're doing this by yourselves, spend longer doing a particular area that's feeling like it needs more work, so it's loose and this is what warming up should be about. I've seen lots of strange warm-ups as I would call them, where people just kind of go straight into quite a hard routine, warming up, preparing the body, not going straight into your exercise. Okay, a few more the other way there. And then we can do a similar thing just with the knee. Just starting the balance, working on the leg that's on the floor, obviously. Changing direction. And then down, and we can change to the other side. Changing direction. So again, just a few different loosening exercises there we've done before. And then we can go on to what we call hinges. So now we're just gonna drop forwards. So again, we're stretching the back of the legs. The legs are staying pretty straight here. We're squeezing the butt and then just standing back up. So I'm going to use the buttocks as much as I can to lower me down and lift me up. Lower me down and lift me up. And then I can add in the arms with this technique so the shoulders get a continue to work in a different plane. And that's flexion and extension. So lean forwards, the arms come up, lean back, or lean back up, straighten up, squeeze and press in. I'm not trying to push the hips right forwards here. I'm just concerned with coming up until I'm straight. Forward stretch, up and squeeze. Forward stretch, up and squeeze. One thing we haven't really discussed about in the, the last three sessions with these movements here, and the same as when we're doing our cogs to start, we've also got this rotation of the knees in and out, which also pronate and supinate the feet. So we don't want to go too sort of deep into the movement, but adding this in is a really great way to, uh, to, to follow natural movement in your body and then do it, get another range of motion. So as I'm falling forwards here, I'm turning the knees inwards and collapsing the feet in, and as I'm coming up, I'm wrapping the legs outwards. So we cave in and pronate the feet, turn the legs out and supinate the feet. Forwards and back, forwards and back. So we're working also now the sacroiliac joints, obviously the, the femur, hip joint, where the trochanter that comes comes into the into the, uh, the pelvis. Okay, so there's our forwards and back. Now we're going to widen the legs, and then we're going to go side to side. So we can just start with the hip push, start with the hip push, and we're stretching the adductor and abductor, the inside and outside of the thigh alternately with each of these movements. So this is good already, just doesn't have to have people try to do these big, big stretches here. Yeah, when well, they don't necessarily need to, you can get a lot of movement, a lot of stretch just by starting with this at least. Depending on course your range of movements and how flexible you are. So now we're just gonna incorporate this arm lift. We fall into one side, the arm comes up as well. And I'm keeping the body, the torso here, straight like a log. So it's 
just making my hips do the stretch. I'm not trying to side flex. Push them to one side, your hips, and then you lean inwards. And then raise the arm the same. I'm also trying to keep the elbow facing backwards and not letting the arm turn up into the air like this. Okay, good. And then we've got rotational. So we're going to bring the feet back to hip width apart. So we're on the heels, and then we're going to turn out with the toes, and we're going to turn out with the arms. We're going to do this actually just with the feet to start so we don't get so confused. Then we come up to parallel, balls of the feet, and then we turn the heels outwards. We're keeping the legs dead straight here, by the way. Parallel, so we pivot back on the balls of the feet, then we go pivot on the heels out, pivot on the heels in. Pivot on the hip, on the balls of the feet out, pivot on the balls in. So out, neutral, and then heels, neutral. Toes out, neutral, heels out, neutral. Add the arms in, toes out, open the arms. Neutral, arms come into centre. And then heels out, and we internally turn, rotate the arms. We clench the fists, turn them down, and we bring them back as far as the shoulders. You can feel the shoulder stretching here. So I'm not bringing the shoulders forwards, I'm keeping the posture strong again. So neutral, open, neutral, and in. So you'll notice that this posture thing is very important for whether we're stretching or whether we are exercising. The more you can keep the posture strong, the stricter everything will be on everything else. You can't cheat. The limbs then have to move further because we're not letting the posture cave in and give way. Close, neutral, open, neutral, in, neutral, open, neutral, in. And again, from the side here, I'm trying not to let the bottom Go backwards and forwards. In and out. In, open, in and out. Okay, so there's our hinges. Now let's go on to our throws. Now a bit more dynamic with our movements. So from the side on, I'll show you here. Feet hip width, toes facing forwards. Flexing the knees this time, but not too much. And certainly I'm flexing the spine. So I want the spine now to do this work. Down, hold the ball, up we come. Lean back, open back, and open out. Back down, but we're grabbing something and throwing a ball backwards maybe. So this is what I call a throw, but we're not doing them fast because we're still warming up. We've got a nice smooth dynamic motion. Down, up, open, and back. Forwards, grab that ball, up we go. Open and back. Forwards, up, open, lean back. Try to look behind you as far as you can. I'm looking backwards into my oriental garden, forwards and back, which you remember I knocked, knocked the wall through. So you can see the garden and the training mats out the back for a nice view. Not. Okay, and then wider with the feet here, and we're going to go to one side, arm over, arm up the back. Swing to the other side, arm over, arm up the back. Bending one knee, straighten with the other. So now we're throwing sideways. Throw, we've always got these three planes of motion that we're working through to make sure we don't miss these different ranges of motion that the body can, is capable of doing. Side, 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 side. Side, side, and I'm trying to reach with the arm so that just end, that end of the movement slows down or I just try to get a bit more range of motion. Creep the arms up further, one up around the back, one down, as I'm also sinking further and relaxing the ankle to sink into that joint. Okay, then we're gonna go straight with our feet a bit closer together, hip to shoulder width. And I'm rotating in, but I'm keeping the drive in the leg here, the solid leg, straight knee and toe facing forwards. So I open up round the hips, then I could do one arm round the shoulder, the other one up round the back. So the front of the shoulder this time, not over the back like last time. And look around to your back, but again, don't let this knee go. People find this very difficult. 
pivot the other foot, neutral so it's straight again, then we turn into that side. Change, neutral, pivot. Change, neutral, pivot. Change, neutral, pivot. So if you can keep doing that same routine, it will help to keep your leg nice and solid and straight rather than that knee swaying out. It has to be a consistency. Yeah, so it's like a, a fast movement, but not quite. And again, I'm trying to time it so everything finishes to its maximum at the same time. Okay, so we've got our rotations done, our throws done. Now we're just gonna go into some slightly more generalized stuff, for the, especially for the legs, which have done some twisting, but the knee joints haven't done quite as much bending as I'd like. So we're gonna go into our basic squats. We're gonna have some imaginary dumbbells in our hands. So we're squatting down, trying to keep the knees, I don't, they can cave in a bit, but they shouldn't go in too far. Yeah, and they so it shouldn't be buckling out either. So a little cave in's natural. Up, open, press and lift. Remember your back should be parallel with your shins as you come down, so not falling forwards like this. So we come down, shin and back on the same line. And you only go down as far as you can manage that. Open, press is good. Practice, you can do both, because this is like more of a functional thing to fall down and come forwards here. and gives you the slightly more range of motion. But if you want to strengthen your, your thighs, your quads and you know, you'll get a good balance. You want to try to come down everything balanced. This is it's like the, almost the hardest, not the hardest version, but uh, you'll certainly notice the thighs loading up more. And it means that everything's now neutral, so I can come pushing up uh, each, each of my, my set of joints, my ankle, my knees, my hips, they're all under a similar duress. Whereas if I fall forwards here, then I'm taking the pressure off of my thighs and I'm putting it much more so onto my, my back and buttocks here. Yeah, so I'm lifting up, so it's a different exercise. So here we're squatting up, open, press. And you can do a calf raise as well, so not forget about the ankles. So down, up, open, press and lift. Down, up, and press. I'm sorry if I talk a bit too much as we're going through, but I'm thinking of these videos where you've been out for a while. And it's not just about going through an exercise session, it's also about doing some instruction and teaching you how to work and train by yourselves, as well as looking at those of you maybe out there that take this in a bit more professionally, however, a deep interest in it. Okay, so there's our, our squatting, and then we can do multi so we've got our lunges. So we'll do this uh, face sideways here. So we're gonna go side across, lunge, step back, and forwards and back, forwards and back, forwards and back. And then we've got a slightly different style, we can do a bit more with our, our movement, so I can step forwards with the left, I can swing the other arm up here. Now I'm gonna step a bit deeper in to get more of a stretch on my hip flexor. Then I'm gonna push back, step back behind my foot, so I've still got the same foot planted on the floor, swing back and I'm stretching the hamstring here as I do this and the arm can go up behind the back as well to extend. So the same leg again, forwards, big stretch, back, big stretch, forwards, big stretch, back, big stretch, forwards, back, forwards, and back. And we can change to the other side. So right leg forwards, left arm up, step back behind your foot, sit back and stretch. Now I'm not let, letting my back round here, I'm keeping the bum perk stuck out so it keeps that hamstring under a duress there. Forwards, stretch the front, back, and stretch the back. Forwards, and back, forwards, and back, forwards, and back. One more. Okay, so there's forwards and backs, how do we do our lateral, sideways, out to the side. Arm over, you can take behind the head if you like, then across, we can do the stretch. Step out, step across, step out, and across. Out, and across, 
out and across. And I'm pushing the hip over here as I do this one. And I'm stretching the shoulder here as well. So always looking at opposites for range of motion. And I could bend the arm up here to touch the shoulder. Yeah. Stretch through the tricep more. Okay, and then we can change to the other side. Step out, behind, step across, push the hip over. Step out, behind, push across, and hip over. Out and down, across, and hip over. And again, we can bend the arm, keep that tricep going through its range of motion more, the shoulder joint. Okay, that'll do, and then we can go on to our rotational movement. So, transverse, so we open out, turn around, and we're gonna open our arm around, and we lift back around as far as we can. Remember, we're trying to keep the knees facing the same direction as the toes here. Okay, I don't want caving in, here. Other hand here, I can keep it out to the side here. You can place it onto your hip, and then this way to keep it back. They come together, I could change here. Step out, open the chest out. Come forward a little bit so I don't fall out into my garden. Turn out, together. Turn out, together. Out. And with both elbows then, you pull back. So you pull back with this elbow, you pull back with the opposite arm. And get an extra stretch on that chest. And we discussed before doing different versions of this um, turning lunge, a rotational lunge. So we can turn here, and then I could pivot on the ball of the foot to bring this around. So it's a different feel here. Open, then pivot, come together. Open and pivot. So a different feel, open and pivot. We're stretching the front of the hip a bit more, but in a rotational direction. Out and turn, rather than the inner hip. Yeah, big turns, big turns. Okay, good. So the arms have kind of got working a little bit. I'll, I'll, I'll go, we'll go on to the arms again in a moment. So we're gonna do some uh, some various triggering exercises anyway. So we'll, we'll be down on the arms again, the, the triceps working a bit more on the elbows. Uh, so our first one is, we're sort of like doing core and stability. I wanna just trigger the muscles that I, I want to work, the core, the st stabilizing muscles. And that's like the intrinsic ones around the glutes, um, the abdominal area, uh, the obliques, and uh, the more intrinsic on the TVA and the pelvic floor. That's one important one. So you can trigger the buttocks just by doing a basic bridge. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to squeeze the buttocks, and I'm going to lift the back off of the floor, and I'm going to try to do it with as little use of my hamstrings as possible. So these ones, all this, this triggering, you want to do a bit controlled and slow, and just make sure that we're using those muscles. So squeeze to come up, and as you come down, I'm still squeezing the buttocks, but lowering. So I'm just keeping my mindset on them. Just don't forget, many of us, we sort of lose sight of how to use these, uh, these important muscle groups. And the glutes are the largest muscle in the body. So squeezing and coming up, down, opening, Squeeze as you can't, you can kind of imagine them coming together here, yeah. crushing the, the grape to your buttocks, and then as you come down, you can open up and kind of drop that grape. Then come back up again, squeeze. You could also do a bit of a pelvic floor squeeze as well. If you don't know what that is, all you're doing is holding in the toilet. Both parts. Squeeze and come up and down. Squeeze and come up and down. And I'm just doing that until I start to feel those burning, the lactic acid going in a little bit. You know, you'll, uh, you'll lose sight of that quite easy if you don't do that very often. Uh, and you could just go up and down and just feel the hamstrings and literally get that. So get those, get those triggered. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over onto the front of our body. And I'm just gonna trigger the core with plank here, plank position. So I could just come up into a straight plank, squeezing the glutes and the abs. And I could just rest that down slightly. Make a cup again and just squeeze. You end up with sort of pulses. And down, you could roll yourself forwards and I can get the arms in play a little bit here. The shoulders, squeezing. 
coming down, stretching the triceps, shoulder joint coming up, squeezing, down, coming up, squeezing. And again, I'm just doing this until I feel the core start to trigger. From the front, I want my, if you can see, from here, not going too far forwards, I want my elbows parallel. So I've got my elbows underneath my shoulders, and I want my forearms, sorry, parallel. Yeah, so I've got my arms not quite in the right position here, probably, because I can't go too far back here. But um, I'm keeping this parallel, this is working my external shoulder rotators as well. I keep my arms out. You'll notice a lot of people that <laughs> slips in, a lot of people do planks like this, and I think we're missing this work on the, the rotator cuff. Okay, so we've just done some of those to get this fired up. Maybe we could do a little bit on the side as well. Get the shoulder used to work on the side. You can do from your knees if you like. You just come up, the other hand could be on the, the hip here. And you could do this legs here. You could do it on staggered so you get better balance. Just so we can feel that connection into the side and even the, the glute meat on the inside of the hip here. And up, and down, and up. Down, up, and down, and one more, up, and down. Then we can change over the other side. Again, you can do it however you feel most comfortable. Lifting up, it's got the feet staggered here. So I'm just focusing on getting that, those muscles down the lateral line, switched on. Up we go, and down, up we go, and down, up and down, and one more, up, just hold in there, and back down again, good, okay, you can also do them laterally here, do the arms straight, just to kind of get this, this feeling of the instability here, so we can have a little lean in, little lean back, see ourselves losing our balance a bit there, and the shoulder just regaining that position, again we're just kind of switching on the proprioceptors, Inside the joints on the other side there. Move around. Losing the balance a bit. Just gaining that. Okay, good. So that's kind of switching the, the shoulder on there. So now we're going to go to the back to the legs here. And switching the, the, the proprioception on us, the, the stabilization, these neural connections going from the brain backwards and forwards to the muscles, telling you how to to hold yourself up and so all we're going to do here is just take the leg around the clocks uh, different directions the front here a little flex in the knee so you just start with that and change legs and try the other side yeah, so the legs changing the, the balance we're taking this is what stability is all about is taking the, the the levers further away from the from the centre from the, the centre of balance centre of gravity okay and then what we can do is we can look at taking the body away which is a higher difficulty level yes yeah, so now we've got the weight of the body falling over and out I really am just trying to keep the other leg at the moment on the inside and stretch the, the muscles as you push the hip out. If you don't let the hip stretch when you lean away, then you're not going to open up the muscle fibers here. Again, a lot of people will just be bending at the back here and afraid to let this go out. But this is one of our ways of improving stability rather than just holding the center. Okay, changing. So we've got these two two kind of ideas of core stability. One is, can I just hold myself in the middle? Maybe just take something out on the side. The other one is increasing range of motion from one to the next. So you get used to finding where that central neutral point is. Now you'll find that you'll struggle maybe in one plane of motion, but not in others. And this is telling you that that plane of motion needs work. Stretching, stretching, okay, you're losing your balance. Okay, so we've got those worked on and triggered. So 
now we've got these three different energy systems that we're going to work and I've got stabilization I've got strength and I've got power I know we're doing stabilization as part of our, our, our uh, thing today but we can still work stabilization with those different energy systems and I'll show you how now so we're going to start with the legs and we want to do stabilization with slow and uh, kind of a, a a three or four second maybe drop into a squat yeah and then maybe a two two seconds or so came back up again but slow and controlled yeah so I'm sinking down here and I'm coming up and I might just add a little bit of a stretch so we'll do this side on here a little bit of stretch into the hamstring on the other side a different way of working the leg up sinking down and up and down and up and down and up and we tend to do around kind of eight to ten repetitions nice and controlled nice and controlled and I'll hold it a second on the bottom there I'm definitely not flying back up I'm only going as low as I can maintain this same posture I was talking about here. Yeah? I don't want to be falling forward now of that, that zone. Okay, changing sides, other one. So we're sinking down and then up and just listening to where you can go down to before you lose your balance. And we don't want to go further than that. And again, sink in and up. You notice here I'm doing opposite arm to leg. You could just hold the hands on the hips if you like, I'm just confused with that. But this is a nice way of moving naturally. Sink in and then up. Sink in and up. And my knee, if you come down, you see it's not really going past my toes very far. The buttock's going backwards here. So we have to, if you want to use the buttock, it's very important here, we've got to get the, the hip joint stretching here. Again, you'll struggle getting all of my clients to, to stretch at that point because the buttocks are too weak and I've forgotten how to work. Back up, sink in, up, and hold. Okay, so we've got a sagittal plane there of that, of that version as well. We could do a, a lateral version, so side on. So I could squat and I can take the leg out to the side and then coming back up. Squat in, take the leg to the side, and back up. Leg to the side, and back up. And again, you could lift the leg up as well as you come up here, slide. So you, you probably notice we, if you've watched the other videos, we're doing some similar exercises here as we've done in the others. We're just using them in a different way, and it's part of a different exercise thing. Okay, and changing. So now it's here as well. I'm leaning in towards the side my legs going out and I'm pushing my hip out to this side. So again, I want to stretch muscle here so it can contract and come back together again. Sinking down, and up, and down, and up, and down, and up, and down, and up. Um, yeah, we're trying to balance, but not for the sake of being wrongly placed on the foot. You want the foot to be nice and flat on the floor. Just doing these movements. Okay, so there's a lateral version. So a rotational version of that we could do. We could squat and we could turn outwards, and then we can come back up and turn inwards. So we could squat and turn out, come back up and turn in. So we'll just do one version of this so we don't got too many going on. Up and in, do it from the side here. So I'm turning around, open, but look, my knee and toes are facing the same direction still. Then coming up here. Turn out, then coming up. Turn it out, then coming up. And I'm just using this back leg to touch down if I wanted to. I'm not really, using my balance now. I'm not actually 
holding myself up with it, but if I wanted, if I wanted to go lower, or I lost my balance, I could just touch the foot in to the floor there. Up, down, and up, and down. And again, you can do, you could do as many of these as you like. You could go further down to the floor. So if you were doing less of a drop, you could do more of them. You can push it another extra inch and you'll be doing less of them, tying them out, okay? But we're doing a lot of muscle groups going on at the same time here, a lot of strain on the, the ligaments and twisting. So we want to remain safe and controlled. Okay, so now we're going to go down to arms and we're going to do a similar thing for the arms. Um, so we're going to work on our forward and back plane to start. So if we just come into a push-up position, you could do this from the knees. Try to keep the bottom down if you can. You do from the knees. And I could just take one hand off the floor and reach out. If you're struggling with that balance a lot, take the feet a little bit wider apart. But we want to be struggling with that balance. So we've got like a tripod here. Three things on the ground at, the, at once. And then here's our stabilization version of forwards and back, forwards and back, forwards and back. <laughs> And we could adjust down the one arm each time, or you can alternate. Okay, so there's so, uh, the forwards and back or uh, sagittal. So now we're going to look at a lateral version of that. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to try to go just with the upper leg here, keep the other one off the floor, and then I can just have a little squat with the other with the, the, uh, the squatter a, an elbow bend here just a small one you could have the other one on the floor you could have your knees on the floor here and going down and up here so just a very small amount so again slowly with that movement and then back out remember it's stability slowly and back up now if you're really struggling with this arm bend you could just drop your el your hips in and lift up drop your hips in and lift up. You could do it straight legs. Drop the hip in and lift up. Drop, in fact, I'm going to stick with this one. So I feel it's a nice stability movement. So I feel my shoulder tiring faster than my, my uh, tricep, which is really what I want, the shoulder joint. And the joint's just to be kind of stabilized as we're in this position. So we can go on to more dynamic movement with the strength, which it holds better for. Okay, so onto the other leg sinking down and up again you can do this from the knees sinking down and up sinking down and up sinking down and up sinking down and up and down and up good okay so there's a natural version rotational version so what can i do here well, if I place the fingers facing, I think, away from me, I come back to this side position, and I'm gonna turn inwards, and then turn back out. Turn inwards, and turn back out. So again, I think you could do this from the knees here, just rolling in, and rolling out. Turn inwards, and turn out. In, and out. In, and out. Okay, onto the other side. So I start moving through. These are a few more things to try to cover. So I'm facing the fingers away from me with this one at the moment. Okay, so I'm turning inwards and back out. Inwards and back out. And again, you can just place the hand down if you want to. Or you can do that without. Or you could do it with either foot on the floor. Inwards and out. Inwards and out. In and out. Okay, good. I forget. So we've got the stability working for the legs and the arms. Now we're on to strength. So now I'm going to go back to my right leg and I'm going to squat the same, but I'm going to squat faster. So my, um, this on the side here, so my uh, strength movement here, back up, here, and back up. And I'm going to stick to the one leg so we burn that out nicely down and up and again you could 
balance with the leg, I'm just going to make a lift the knee up to make it less of a, an, uh, a tiresome stabilisation exercise and more something you can repeat a bit faster and down and up and down maybe push a few deeper ones and up and down and up and try to keep on that heel as well yes yeah, so I want when that knee comes forwards not too far the butt back but I want the heel to be on the floor if you can't drive from your heel on a squat then you're missing a great part of that and down and up and down and up down up and down and up and down and up one more Good, and we'll go to our sideways version. So the leg goes out to the side, so make sure those toes are facing forwards. Squatting down, lifting up. Remember, I'm not really placing the weight on this leg, that's reaching out. I'm just sliding it and back up. The weight on the heel as well. Knee up, squat down. Knee up, down. Push out those, the depth a bit more if you can. Remember here, we're on strength. Okay, change. Sixes, one, and up. Two, and up. Don't forget, strength, you can work anything between uh, two to ten repetitions. And up. But saying that, you still build strength when you're working high reps as well. Just take the longer and up. I'm not sure. We have one more, I think, there. And back up. And then rotational. We had turning out, open, and up. Turn, open, and up, open, up, open, up, open, up, open. Change, toes forwards, up, 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 and up, turn, and up, turn, and up, turn, and up, turn, and up, and turn, and up. Okay, good, so there's legs multi-planer. Let's go back to the arms again. So now we're doing a similar kind of a pattern here with the strength, but uh, we're going to look at elbow flexion a little bit more here. So I'm going to try to do, so if you do a push up, you can maybe do one leg off the floor and you can try these. You can change each one. You could do two legs on the floor and one hand on the floor and just do a small push up here, or you could just take the arm off the floor again and just if you can flex you know you can flex you can do them faster and this depends on your strength level if this here is easy coming to here will be a strength exercise for you but if you can you could little push-ups here little push-ups you can lower yourself down further here you can try deeper push-ups. Okay, so there's push-ups straight on stage at all. On the side, same thing. Here, I'll sit down. And I can bring the hips in closer to the arm so I can get lower if I like. The push-up, you could use another hand on the floor to help. Yeah, okay. Changing sides. So I just want these to, to tie me out quickly as well. Sinking. Sinking. And they are doing. Sinking. Sinking. Okay, push-ups. Sideways, so rotational versions. Uh, so we had, we could do down together, up and turn. Down together, up and turn. Down together, up and turn. 
and the less work you put with the opposite arm, the harder of course that is. Changing. Now I'm working through these quite fast. You could spend your time working any of these types of exercises sort of one at a time in smaller groups in your exercise plan. But here, you're getting more cardiovascular, more total body as well. Okay, so the final thing I wanted to do after I've had a drink is power. So we did the stabilization, we've done strength. Let's look at how we can do this through power. So we get ready. Build our energy back up again. And then we're gonna go forwards and backwards with a hop. So we're gonna go here, back to the other leg. Sink down, push back up. Sink down, push back up. Sink down, and back up. Down, and back. Down, and back. Down, and back, down, and back, one more, down, and back. So power centers on the legs, changing sides, down, back, down, and back, down, and back, down, back, down, and back, one more, down, and back, sidewards. Now we're going to go out to that left leg. So we're going to kick sidewards, by skater. And we can do both legs at the same time here. Down, down, down. You could have changed this to do one side. Here we're kind of saving a bit of distance. So I could have kind of stopped with a straightened leg here and then sink right the way down to the next leg. Yep, but here I'm doing both. Yeah. Ice skater. Okay, and then we have rotational. So I'm going to turn to do a similar thing with the ice skater here. Turn. So if I do like a, a kind of a, uh, what would be 90 degrees through two 45s, but make it to face you here, so I can do it oblique. Turn, turn, and only go down as low as you can maintain your balance. Okay, and then we have arms. So you know, kind of had to do arms dynamically like this is basically squat thrusts. So we can, rather than jumping forwards onto the arms, we can place the arms down and jump them back. Now this is our traditional squat thrust. We'll do them one arm here. Back with the legs, back up. So if you're struggling, you could go back with one leg and keep two arms on the floor. Here, and back. Down, back. Can have your little push up involved there as well. Doesn't want to go far unless you're super fit. Super strong arms. Okay, sideways, same thing. Out to the side, keep the legs out. I'm going to try just to come to the one foot here, like we were practicing earlier. And then we'll sit down and back up. Other side. Little sec, and back up. Change, and back. Change, and back. So everyone can do their own little adaptions here. So suit your strength. Okay, and then we have rotational to finish. And I think we'll go from straight here to turn here, back up. So, 
straight to turn and back up straight to turn straight turn straight turn and then change sides last one straight turn or straight down straight this way turn turn down and up straight turn straight turn straight and turn oh. okay quick sip So if there's some of you out there thinking Corey's not very fit, you might be right. <laughs> but uh, the idea of it, of course, is to change your fitness. And if it's not sending you a little bit do lay towards the end, we're not taking it to that point where we, we just don't know where we're going and we're injuring ourselves. We still want to be able to focus enough so that we can slow our body down to an extent you'll hear that you'll hear that control in your body where it's just going too far and then it's time to either stop or rein in the depth that you're going to uh, the speed you're doing it whatever it might be so you know balance is all about being able to do something with balance smoothly and faster as you can go and if you can put those things together then that means it's going to help you to do whatever it is that you need to do. You know, if, if you're just into health or if you're an athlete, then you might need for, for different things or to go to certain to different levels. Ah, oh, okay. So you could have a little stretch now. We've run out of time. You're taking this well past the 45 minutes mark, which I, I often do in my sessions, to be fair. Uh, if you're interested in what we've done here, if you've enjoyed yourselves, then please get in touch and uh, and, and see you know, if, if we can take this further, if we can do any more. Um, I can do one-to-one -one instruction, obviously, um, group training sessions and classes, depending on the numbers of you and how much sort of uh, personal instruction that, that, that you, you want, you require. Uh, so you've got any possibilities there. All you need to do is go to my website, which is going to come, come on your screen now. That's stuartfordfmai.co.uk and uh, from there you can look to the coach in the box section which will tell you more about my online service or you can follow any of the different branches to go and find uh, uh, the different things that I do martial arts, fitness, injury therapy and uh, <laughs> so I hope you've enjoyed it I, I, I certainly have um, and yeah I think that's probably it for now don't forget to put a subscription on the page if you can on the, on the YouTube channel, and that would also be, be helpful. Okay, so uh, nice to, to meet you, whoever's watching out there, and, uh, and the ones that have joined in and done the, the, the classes with me as well online on YouTube, on, uh, on Zoom. Okay, so bye for now.